What is this Raron video that you guys are are yapping about? Hold up. Raron. Some of you might. I tried to become a great duelist in Yu-Gi-Oh two days ago. Okay. Be wondering why I'm playing this game again. So let's talk about it real fast. If you didn't see last year, I played Yu-Gi-Oh for virtually the very first time. And the goal was to play it for 10 hours to try it out from a brand new player's perspective. But I quickly realized that after four hours, I didn't really want to play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. And maybe it's just me, but I found Yu-Gi-Oh to be extremely overwhelming. And there was a bunch of different reasons for that. And I felt like it was worth making a video. So I remember this happening. We didn't react to it on stream because I think I was on vacation at the time. And um, the first time around he tried Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, to me, it felt like he went into it with the uh, like, like, I, I think the goal of that of that uh, endeavor last year was never to actually learn and evaluate Yu-Gi-Oh! It was like just from the get-go, I feel like the, the attempt was just to, like, make fun of it. Which was my issue with it at the time. Like, and I'm not saying that Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't hard or overwhelming. It absolutely is. But I, I, I felt like, um, at least the tone of the video was, like... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Incredibly negative from the get-go. Um, but... Yeah, I don't I don't know if this is meant to be like a second try, a second attempt and taking it seriously this time. But the first one, I wasn't a big fan of the approach, let's say, which is actually not saying that Yu-Gi-Oh isn't very complicated because it is. But um, yeah, that basically talked about the issues that I had as a brand new player trying to get into Yu-Gi-Oh. But oddly enough, I made a pretty big impact in the Yu-Gi-Oh community and I didn't even really mean to, but people took it as I was just trying to make a video to piss off the community which I think is a pretty fair perspective considering that I was basically just shit talking Yu-Gi-Oh because of how difficult it was getting into the game but the reality exactly. is I just want to be more than a Hearthstone content creator because then I tried Magic, Runeterra, Pokemon and I didn't have any of the issues that I had with Yu-Gi-Oh in any one of those games and in fact I could play all of them for more than 10 hours which brings us back to why I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh once again the main criticism that I received from that Yu-Gi-Oh video is I actually actually didn't give the game a fair chance which I think in hindsight is completely fair because okay. I was just trying to have fun with the game not actually trying to become good at it yeah so that was my issue too I thought that was my issue um with the first one um however I do absolutely agree with the criticism of like all these other games that he mentioned I know how to play all of them like um Pokemon trading card game Runeterra Magic all of them i think are e are more fun in the very beginning like it, it's definitely more fun to learn those games i think with Yu-Gi-Oh, learning Yu-Gi-Oh is not very fun whereas in other games i think it can be very fun in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's more frustrating than actually fun uh yu -Gi -Oh becomes fun once once you have learned it and i do think that is a problem and i also think it's hard to blame raran for uh not seeing that like at from the get-go right it's hard to see how the game could be if you would understand it right like it, it, it's yeah uh we haven't built the deck yet no we're doing it after after this because i'm i'm having a uh, lunch right now so last time i played Yu-Gi-Oh, a lot of people had an issue with me basically of saying oh well you didn't take enough time to actually learn the game because people thought that i wasn't actually legitimately trying but this time what i'm going to do is something a little bit different instead of going in with a new player perspective why don't i try something completely different my plan was to use something i like to call the league of legends perspective the way that i learned league of legends was by playing one champion and learning the game through that champion and i would imagine the same philosophy would work really well with Yu-Gi-Oh. So I decided to message a content creator for Yu-Gi-Oh, Farfa, to ask him what the best deck I could play as a brand new player. See, one of the issues I had last time is I let my chat pick the deck I should play, and <laughs> that wasn't a great decision. So I felt like Farfa was a much better person to go to because he could maybe understand where I'm coming from. Going to Farfa, huh? Okay.
Um, and luckily for me, he recommended a deck called Sword Soul, which coincidentally was also being given away for virtually free with a promotion that Master Duel was doing. So shout out to Farfa for not only guiding me, but basically giving most of the cards for free. After getting the deck, I went online to look up a guide for Sword Soul and I found this one. So I've been making this deck. The only question I have for you, chat, what's the fastest way of getting ultra rare dust? Do I just buy packs? Unfortunately, I did have to buy packs, so I spent $30 to get enough ultra rare dust to complete a deck that i found online even after all of the cards i got for free but i was okay i mean to be fair i'm pretty sure if you make a completely new account you get the free sword soul deck i'm pretty sure you don't need to spend any money if you just wanna if you just wanna build sword soul i don't I, I, technically i think it is the fastest because it's like two clicks spend some money it's faster than going like through some of the solo modes but um like it, it, it's probably you can get that for free but it, it, that's nitpicking it's whatever i worried i feel like even yugi had to spend some money in order for him to become a great duelist so this was worth the price first you play this tenyai spirit ashuna's effect to special summon itself on the field that card is this card which says if you control no effect monsters you could special summon link summon monk of the tenyi which is that card after the deck was built i spent a significant amount of time to actually learn how the deck is played i read the guide multiple times tried to figure out what the cards in my deck were for combos but most importantly i went against ai to practice them i wanted to make sure before i even fought against a real player i had a foundation on how the deck actually worked uh if you control no effect mo okay wait wait is this part of the effect i have infinite time right normal summon sort of mo yi but i don't have the sort of mo yi okay so then that means so this is a better approach to learn Yu-Gi-Oh, for sure. So I'm liking that you're taking this time, right? However, I will say that the fact that people have to do this to play Yu-Gi-Oh is maybe could be considered a problem in of itself, in and itself, right? Like maybe that is a problem that we need to talk about at some point, right? Like that is um, concerning. I think I think that's concerning because I think um, that is not I'm trying to put myself into the perspective of someone who is not like me, right? who is not already super deep into competitive games and especially card games, because um, for me, if I want to play a card game, this would always be the approach. Like I would always go min max and look online on, on resources and all that kind of stuff. I think the majority of people aren't like that, though. The majority of people would just try to pick up a game casually played a little bit see if it's fun and then if it's fun in the beginning then they would go harder and maybe eventually get into this sort of try try harding stage right the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh is that you have to basically try hard before you're even hooked the problem I see with this approach is that nothing is showing the fundamentals of the game I think that there needs to be a better way of onboarding new players that layers mechanics over time I have a whole demo lesson plan built because of it yeah, it's a it's a rough question, dude, because like to me, this sort of thing was just always very natural, like because I've I've done it in real time. Like I've learned Yu-Gi-Oh in real time, like the literally I learned new mechanics as they came out, as they were released. I can't even put myself into the position of someone who needs to learn all of that at the same time. So it's very hard for me to judge on what would be the best way to do that. Right. Like because I had I had like, you know, I had years to learn uh exceeds uh, synchros then years to learn exceeds then so on and so forth right like it was all it was step by step right and it's just like it's very hard for me to judge how it how it, like I, I can understand how it's overwhelming because and i'll be honest with you this sort of thing of like overwhelm being overwhelmed with information that sort of stuff still happens to me to this day when a new Yu-Gi-Oh deck comes out depending on how complicated it is i mean go back last week watch me play infernoble for the first time like and if i'm struggling like this right if i'm struggling like this imagine someone who hasn't played this game at all yet or is new to it or hasn't been playing this game for 20 years or whatever like i have you know like imagine them picking up infernoble for the first time right um i know infernoble is like harder than other decks like it's probably on the scale of like complicated decks is like up there but still it just goes to show no matter how long you play this game for 
um overwhelming information like is 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 one of Yu-Gi-Oh's core problems especially when it comes to um attracting new players right um the thing with Yu-Gi-Oh is just that if you overcome this sort of stage it's it's very very fun right like and and that is the thing that people that that is why we still get people right we still have we don't have the problem that like player numbers are declining like Yu-Gi-Oh isn't dying right that's not what I'm trying to say uh Yu-Gi-Oh is very like alive and kicking and all that right and new players are finding their way into the game I just I I love this game and I'm just worried about like I want more people to do it I, I I'm wondering if we could even have more people join if we could even have it thrive even more right so that's why I'm having this discussion not because I actually think it's a it's gonna like like the game is gonna die or something like that i think that's not the case that couldn't be further from the truth but i i think um like if we could if we can find a way to attract even more people to the game i think we should try and like look into that we're gonna try the first combo uh which i also do not so i feel like i need to play this then in order to get the card for my my deck i'm gonna try this first and we'll go from there do you activate this card's effect that includes any of these effects well that didn't fucking work let me restart this for the record this is literally what this stream's gonna be you guys can keck w all you fucking want yeah, that lets me get the mo yi mo yi more problems nice hey we're cooking normal sword summon mo yi okay and activate his effect to reveal the worm monster in your hand i don't know if i have a worm monster in hand hold on i might have cooked i'm actually laughing at this footage now because after completing the challenge it's really funny to see how far i've actually come but i'm really glad that i took the time to read this guide and just played against the bot for a significant amount of time learning this basic combo actually helped me out for the entire rest of the challenge and most importantly i didn't feel like i was lost the entire time that was learning the combo that's all i wanted to do with that well i guess one of the combos it's obviously gonna take a little bit longer for to understand the whole deck but we'll, we'll get to that later so i'm doing ranked to basically see um if i understand the combo now for context i probably looked at that guide in practice for about an hour and a half and to my surprise i think it really helped i get you hey do i have a worm in hand i do right so we summon you we activate your effect i show him this dude card. have we gotten math mech combo that's unfortunate we special summon this guy right? leave the game yes and then you. while you still can this allows me to play this in the front position even though i was still reading the guide to perform this combo i was performing the combo against a real player for the very first time in a ranked match and i do find it a little absurd that i have to spend over an hour just to kind of feel comfortable with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck but i can't argue it did feel really good because that seems better we then play you i don't know if i did that wait did i do that wrong no i did that right you and then you how is this absurd um i think this seems absurd if you're looking at it from the perspective of a um mana based card game player right like because i know raran mostly plays hearthstone in hearthstone i don't think it's outrageous to just copy a deck uh look at the cards maybe for 10 minutes or something like that or maybe not even look at it at all and just jump into the game you're not gonna play it well right you're not gonna play it well but you are gonna be able to play right um and like the the the, the mana progression system filters out a lot of decision making uh in the early turns obviously like sequencing your cards right and saving your resources i'm not saying there's no skill in it there's a lot of skill in it but um the skill of selecting which card to start with for example completely gets eliminated if you like turn one one mana no card in your hand costs one mana so obviously pass turn right draw your draw your hand there's one card that costs one well you're probably gonna play that one on turn one right you have two true drops in your hand your de your decisions on turn two literally like binary right play that or play that right and so like from that perspective i think there's a lot more learning by doing in those kind of games right like you just like you hop in you you do what you can 
and you see if it works or if it doesn't work and you like learning along the way learning uh, uh all that like th that's um that's much easier to do in those games than it is in in Yu-Gi-Oh. and i think there's another big deal that i think is i i don't think people have talked about this i haven't heard that argument before but like when you when it comes to online simulators uh when you compare Yu-Gi-Oh to others like like hearthstone for example um because hearthstone is like more turn-based and Yu-Gi-Oh is way more focused on the early turns and doing a lot in one turn uh, you have less like downtime like if you're going first in Yu-Gi-Oh you have to know what you're doing right away as a new player you, you can't take the time to read the cards in your hand if you're playing Hearthstone even if you don't know what your cards do like you can just play your one drop past turn and spend the time that your opponent is is taken off the clock like you can you can use that time to read your cards like you draw a new card uh you you do your turn you pass you you have time to read your cards over and over and over again like in Yu-Gi-Oh you're expected to do all of it like immediately right uh, and I think that also um plays into that right plus that the cards have more text right you get played here yes uh no then we do this can i kill this bitch? i can no what just happened oh no what i do what was that you got one monster you control and two cards your opponent controls to destroy them that could be really good okay so if i want to battle can i hit this i'm testing this for science i can and then i don't want to do this is that my turn okay I think this is lethal. Isn't he at like 3,000 attack? Isn't this guy fucking huge? Oh my god. I just ate this man's ass for breakfast, bro. It's not even the start of the day. Huh? Oh my god. F bitch. Holy shit. I know this is like the lowest rank possible in Master Duel, but it felt really good to win my first game <laughs> after training for so long. I'm sure Yugi would look at me as I am one of the greatest duelists of my generation. And the future was looking bright because for the very first time playing this game, I felt really good about it. And I finally got a glimpse of what makes this game so fun. Doing your combo is absolutely euphoric. And yeah, I'm definitely not in the higher echelon of players in Yu-Gi-Oh where my mistake will be punished but for the time being I was genuinely having a pretty good time and I couldn't say that at all the last time I played Yu-Gi-Oh a card is banished you can banish one card each from both your opponent's field engraver yeah okay love to see it I think that's you see we're getting there and I think this part this is the part where Yu-Gi-Oh starts getting fun right the problem is the part before that and it, it's not even that long that you're like like super confused and frustrated right but it's just it's always the first one you have to get through this like initial effort to at least understand somewhat what's going on right you don't need to know every single card to start playing the game but you need to know some of what's going on Right. Over bitches. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question, chat. What rank would I have to achieve in this game for you guys to think that I'm not bad at this game anymore? If I hit diamond, would you guys be like, wow, he's good at this game? Yes. Yes. Okay. After my first day, I was having fun. I wanted to play more. And now I have a goal. The goal of getting diamond in order for me to feel like I am not the worst player at this game anymore. But most yeah, importantly, is that I gave it a fair shot this time. Because I don't think it's possible to get diamond not reading your cards. The only thing I've done off stream since the last time I played on stream, I played this game. And this guy conceded literally on turn one. And I was popping off. Last time I played Master Duel was what? Saturday? But today's Wednesday. It's been four days since I played it. Let's see if I still got it after four days starting off in day two i was a little rocky with the combo even though it's only been four days it's like i forgot the combo just a little bit to lose more often than win but after the first four games i definitely pulled it together and i went on a little spicy win streak like when you click blue eyes and he's like what the fuck? i think probably the most important <laughs> thing about the second day other than just winning a lot is understanding where i made a mistake oh i can sacrifice this card hold on <laughs> wait i said it though i said it i should have played it like an actual human being okay yep. it's fine this is all learning it's all 
fucking learning. It's fine, dude. I'm uh, I'm kind of popping off here, dude. Like we had a little bit of a rough start. Like I started here. I lost three games in a row, but then I only lost one more after and I kind of just blew my ass or blew everyone out of the water, right? I blew their ass. <laughs> blew their eyes anyways even after being very successful for day two and reaching the gold rank i felt like i was still missing something very important to maximize my potential with this deck in almost all the other card games i have played usually around the gold rank is where you start actually min maxing and just optimizing your play patterns in order for you to climb to the highest rank the thing about Yu-Gi-Oh is that there are so many cards and nuances to every deck you go against that the barrier of getting better at the game is very very intense and that was one of my biggest criticisms with Yu-Gi-Oh last time I played it it is a very overwhelming experience even though I do think chat isn't always the best teacher at some points without them I think I would be genuinely lost so shout out the chat but it was time to take my gameplay up to the next level and I decided to do something rather drastic tomorrow Farfa will be on the stream she's gonna take me <laughs> up to, to the next level I needed the training arc first before I talked to Farfa you know what I mean now, for the people who don't know, Farfa is basically the main content creator other than MBT that reacted to my Yu-Gi-Oh video. So having Farfa as my actual teacher to learn Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of a redemption arc for me, but it also gives Farfa the opportunity. Okay, so you gain Farfa, you gain Farfa as your coach, but you also lose Twitch chat completely as literally being proven right now with my Twitch chat. Like as soon as even the word farfa enters the chat like twitch chat is gone right so yeah need to teach me Yu-Gi-Oh and show me that this game can be very enjoyable you're sacrificing you your twitch chat in order to get I don't um, know if you saw I am, I'm kind of gaming on farfa this game as a coach <laughs> game this game okay I am no. I am I am strictly the card gamer now how good are you at sword soul okay uh well I'm not trying to like flex too hard but I got top 16 at my national championship with it when the deck was at its peak so okay top 16 sounds really really good congratulations first and foremost I hit gold the goal for the end of probably like this week for me is platinum I did know UK Nats Kek W I mean you guys are Kek Wing and Wawang but uh like Farfa is actually like not bad at the game like it, it's like especially for teaching a new player Farfa can definitely do that 100 percent. and UK Nats is also yeah not the smallest event out there like that's a that's a respectable accomplishment Notice yesterday there is a lot of combinations I am not aware of I am familiar has Farfa topped the Nats more recently than you no I topped last year Farfa topped in 22 with the mo yi strategy that one seems to be pretty common it seems to be all really, right you really got good. that one down but nice. it's like i think they're called tennies okay the tennies are tripping you up all right yeah, that's fair so they are the that's the extra layer of complexity in sword soul is the tennies that's true okay so the tennies is where i'm gonna need you to come in because at this point in time i feel like i'm pretty i'm pretty okay with just getting the the mo yi combo out but this is the next stage in the training arc because i don't want to read or watch a 40 minute video about how to do the tennies things this is why you're here hopefully that's fair okay sure uh, well so i had an idea i figured that maybe you do like uh, i was i was gonna suggest maybe you do like one duel like completely unaided and then uh i can just sort of pick up on like what it is you're doing wrong or struggling with and not seeing and then maybe review it afterwards or whatever you feel like is necessary for me to get better at this deck i will i'm all about it the goal basically by the end of this is that you give me enough knowledge that it will carry me to the next rank what you have 11 extra deck cards well what it's worth emra picked up sword soul and he also struggled with tinny uh, yeah, but Emre is also just like exclusively summoning Robina and activating uh, Martha these days, so this is definitely not how i would play the de the, the list the first thing farfa suggested was updating the deck a little the deck that i found from the guide wasn't very optimal so we added a few cards to make the deck even better this is very important to note because this is the deck that i use going forward does right, the deck enough. play any different 11 now? extra deck i mean unironically Unironically, starting the game with just the most essential extra deck monsters is not that bad. It's it's not that big of a deal. The same thing, like you guys are kick Wing at 43 cards in the deck or 42 cards in the deck. Like that is unironically like so irrelevant if you're trying to learn the game. Like that is that is a level of min-maxing. That's a level of min-maxing that you don't need to do in the beginning, like unironically. 
That, that is not necessary whatsoever, chat. Now that we've added these cards. Because you've added Yazi, there's like a neat little uh, line that you can do when you make a Synchro 7. Uh, so typically that's going to be Long One and an Adhara. Uh, so when you Synchro the... Uh... Okay, so first of all, <laughs> do you remember what all of your cards are? Let's 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 try to remember what all of our cards do in the main deck, right? The mistake is all when right, you I'm... ask far for the coach. Listen, stop fucking hating on this, all right? I, at the end of this tunnel, not only am I going to be a great Yu-Gi-Oh player, but Farf is going to be an excellent TG. This is basically a cup of I mean, toss a coin and play this card. If you're feeling unlucky. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. We're fine. I'm glad I'm out of this. Let me let this out of this. <laughs> Did he get this? No, you should have asked him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's work on some game sense, right? So the first thing you want to do when you join a duel is hit the middle mouse button. Oh, so shit. when you hold it down, you can see a bunch of information on the screen, right? So you can see that they have X number of cards in hand. You can see how many cards they have in there. What the first thing you want to do, I never do this. So when you join a game, the first thing you should do is check how many cards your opponent is playing. Depending on how many cards they're playing, it could give you like a rough idea as to like what deck they're playing. Even though people would call Farfa a bad teacher, I think he did a really good job. And honestly, after this stream, I was more confident than ever that I could at least get Diamond and Master Duel. Every single game. I mean, this is probably just people min-maxing too much on farfa like nit being nitpicky i'm pretty sure like he's uh he's got he's competent enough to teach the fundamentals of sorts i didn't see the stream so i, I can't really see but like it seems i at least took something yeah. away or i got slightly better at a combo that i wasn't super efficient at yet all right your opponent's making you start here that's making me nervous they won the dice roll they, they? won they got the pick they got the pick okay so okay, going is, first we want to summon mr baron correct or mrs baron yeah okay so i mean if it was me i would pass against someone who's just going who's just making you start all right but we're gold though we're gold <laughs> I mean, gold is where everyone's playing Makanko, but sure. I don't know what the uh, fuck that right. is. Is that good? <laughs> so, okay, so how would you play this turn out? Great question. We could just go with the Long Young, but that's not actually going to be the case, right? We want to... Actually, couldn't we just go with Long Young? We... Long Young gets me the Baron immediately, but we want to use more of our cards here, correct? Uh, Yeah, so the reason I wouldn't start with Ty is because you don't have anything in the graveyard yet to set him up. Um, So I would definitely okay. uh, lead with Long One here. Now, wh what would you discard? Great question. Uh, is it a, this one? Yeah, because your tenyes all have good effects in the graveyard. Okay, perfect. Uh, I mean, and here, I would probably just... Uh, okay, so we've already got Adhar. We're going to get the thing back in rotation. Uh, I would probably just send... It kind of just doesn't matter. Uh, the Vishit is fine. Okay. So here, I would go into... Okay, your opponent's oh, just going to skip. Game. <laughs> right, okay, let's go. okay, so what would you add off of Chishao here in this situation? Uh, Long Yan, because he... It helps me get another sinker next turn. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to summon another guy this turn, but the question is like, oh, do you, you know want what I actually would get? Off? Sorry, my apology. I would actually get the green spell. I forget what it's called. The one that pulls. Two, yeah, the okay, one that pulls cool. something. Well, there's like two ways to do it, right? Because you could um, probably get like the spell for follow up, or you could choose to get the uh, trap card blackout. Um, do you know what blackout does? Blackout defends my stuff, right? Like I sacrifice something and then it gets rid of two of their cards. Yeah, yeah exactly. But because you have. In that scenario, you would you would have used the Dahara to add back Ashuna. You already kind of have follow-up, so I would have just got the defensive card. I would have got Blackout in that scenario. And one of the great features of Master Duel is watching a match you just played so you can VOD review the replay in order for you to get better at the deck, which we did a lot during this stream. This was a really good learning experience, especially if you're somebody who wants to be learning the deck that I played. I would heavily recommend you go watch this stream. Also, that reminds me, everything I have posted in this video is on stream live on the YouTube channel. So if you want to see everything that I did up until this point, feel free to go watch. The other option is like literally just telling you what to do and then watching the replay. But I, I, for me personally, I don't learn like that. If I'm, if someone is just telling me the plays, I'm not learning anything. I no, need to I, know. I, I need do to... agree with you. Yeah, as much as, I don't know why your chat gives you so much shit for being a teacher because you're actually good at it. You ask, you ask the question rather than just saying what to do, which is a big deal. Oh, it, thanks least, man. I appreciate at least, that. You, at least I have to think on why you're asking me the question, right? That's a huge, it's a huge aspect to learn. There's no way I'm going to be fucking good at this for a while. This is just, it's just important to uh, do the reps. I mean, you're doing really, really well. It's just like you just don't know some of the combos because you've just never been taught them. And finding information in this game can be kind of a kind of an uphill battle. I'm going to take what you taught me today. You remember like some of the... I mean, it's hard for me to add to this, honestly, because I've, 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 I'll repeat what I said earlier. Uh, I this, uh, this is a good approach to learning Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Finally, like as opposed to the first time he tried to play it, this is roughly how you would do it, right? Like take one deck, take the time to learn the cards, learn the lines, all that. Then once you're ready, go into the game, even rewatch some of your games, try to figure out what you did wrong, what you could have gotten be done better. 
even get someone to to teach you right um it's a it's a good approach on how to do it right and it's like it's um it's giving Yu-Gi-Oh a fair shot and i'd be surprised if he wasn't able to make like diamond with with that like the, the at that point like if you're actually trying like this you can get into it right and that is the sort of positive takeaway because no matter how many barriers of entry there are which i mean we have talked about that right there are huge barriers of entry towards Yu-Gi-Oh, but they are not uh they are not huge to the point where you can't overcome them they can be dealt with you can still get into this game it is possible you just need to set your mind to it you need to uh you need to get to a certain point where i think the process actually starts getting fun uh, because I think initially, at the very first instance, I don't think it's 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 that fun to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think that is the core problem. I think once you get to a certain point, like where he's at at the moment, I think, from what I'm seeing, I think that's where it starts becoming like a fun experience to like figure out, you know, as you know what's going on, right? And then figure out how to actually do it and how to improve fundamentals which is your boxy of play and your tenny plays which is i guess what you wanted to focus on well okay so the tenny plays is a big deal but what i'm gonna do is next time i play this game i'm gonna take what you said to me today and apply it as much as i possibly can to just learn the ins and outs of the combo because that's the next step that's what i needed you for legitimately because there's no way i would have understood half of this i appreciate you coming man i hope you have a good rest of your night oh dude the, the honor is mine thank you because of farfa's excellent teaching i was feeling very confident after that session it was three hours of learning the ins and outs of the deck and i was pretty confident to start playing off stream and climb and that's exactly what i did i got platinum chat everyone clap everyone clap for platinum okay platinum is great honestly i'm really glad i made it this far if i'm gonna be completely honest with you guys i didn't expect to make this far uh now we're gonna go for Wait, isn't diamonds plat I isn't plat just the one under diamond aren't we almost there i don't know if i can get diamond by the end of today but the goal is to get Di diamond i'm still playing the same deck it's the same deck that farfa showed me last week i'm not changing it i'm gonna say something i have played enough Yu-Gi-Oh, and i think i've given it a fair enough chance going second in this game might be the worst gaming experience i've ever had thank you for listening my that's the only thing i gotta say dude like let me tell you a story okay i'm playing this game on my ipad like with my girlfriend downstairs because i was trying to get platinum and i literally said to myself if i'm going second i'm gonna go make some food i was gone for five minutes and the guy was still playing the game not maybe not five <laughs> but four minutes I, and i couldn't do any actions because i had nothing another one of my biggest critiques from the previous video of Yu-Gi-Oh is going second feels absolutely miserable in every other card game i have played going second doesn't feel nearly as bad because your opponent just can't win sometimes going first in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're going second and depending on the deck that you have if you don't have the hand traps to deal with what your opponent is doing there's a pretty good chance that you could just lose the game and it goes this is fair criticism for some formats. This is uh this is this is genuinely fair criticism for some formats. It's not always true. Uh it's not true for every game, it's not true for every format, but it is definitely um it's definitely like these like it's it's valid criticism. That's what saying. I am What is this field? This is world's uh this is the world's uh field not the best Yu-Gi-Oh player and I'm not claiming to be but just from a player experience it does feel really bad it's also really important to note that I don't think just because you are going second you so essentially essentially and this is something that is very very true for Yu-Gi-Oh more so than I think sometimes other games um this sort of stuff this sort of gameplay happens and in in, in these formats um these formats are unfortunately um much more about the deck building process than the actual gameplay process right like um and if you can't solve it with deck building then the format is just bad right and we do have that we have bad formats uh other games have bad formats too in different ways you know like a, a bad hearthstone format is not because like the games are being decided on turn one but like there's other factors that can make like a hearthstone format bad or like a rune terra format bad or a pokemon tcg format bad like there's there's factors that can make a card game formats bad like it's always going to be dependent of when you pick up the game um but like specifically for Yu-Gi-Oh, i think the going first is like its biggest weakness of why formats have been bad in the past right i i will give them that 
automatically lose a game but luckily for me a lot of the games that I was playing on stream climbing through platinum did go beyond just turn one and turn two and some of these games felt really good while the synchro summon card is on your field your opponent cannot activate effects I mean let's do this sure that sounds better than this to be honest they got nothing need word card well i needed to show him a sword soul uh x chaos and j to the c thank you guys for the subs and also the kind words i appreciate you thank you for uh long young right hold on we're so back can i play this now oh my god i'm gaming all right who's bigger uh you yeah okay. essentially i think i mean if you want my like proposed solution or something like that i think uh i think Yu-Gi-Oh is like at its best at the moment modern Yu-Gi-Oh. because i don't want to i don't want to say like oh let's go back to how it was back in the day i don't think that's that's the solution but i think Yu-Gi-Oh is in a good spot when the decks uninterrupted make boards of like the the level of i don't know unchained maybe um sword soul is also a decent example right like if those are the kind of boards that people make uninterrupted then i think Yu-Gi-Oh is good because the the boards are not so powerful that you need to draw hand traps to stay in the game right like there are certain decks where if you don't have a hand trap you will just not win the game and i think that is that is the problem right that is the problem you need decks where that needs to be the benchmark right that needs to be what decks do when they go first right they can they can special summon a decent amount they can make multiple summons i don't take any issue with that because that's that is modern Yu-Gi-Oh. that's never gonna change we just need like the level of end board that people make needs to not automatically win the game if it's not met with a hand trap right um like yeah like like i said the two examples that i was thinking of like you know unchained sword soul like if that's the type of boards that people make uninterrupted then you're not forced to play hand traps you can but you don't have to um and then you get a you get a solid back and forth i think no matter what happens this is lethal because i have never i don't think i have ever stared down a sword soul board uh disregarding protoss I've never looked at a sword soul board and went like, yeah, I can't play this. Like that has not happened. If that happens, your bad is your board is just bad. Uh, unless they flip like a floodgate, but then it's not the same example, right? Like, but like just like Baron Shishao blackout pass. Like, I've never played a game where I would just scoop it up and it wouldn't even be worth trying, right? That just doesn't happen. All right. I uh <laughs> I don't know if that was the correct way of doing it but whatever even through all of the games I have played and the training I received by basically a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player I'm still making mistakes and I don't know if that's a skill differential on my part just being not a great Yu-Gi-Oh player Quantal mentioned or the game is insanely complicated but I just want to say I have a huge respect for people who play this game at the highest level because even though I can confidently say I can understand the basic combos I need to do with my deck sometimes I go against a brand new opponent who's running cards I have never seen before and my entire strategy is just shattered there is so much to learn in this game it's absolutely I'm glad he used that clip of Quantle and not the one where he summoned Rhino Hard and passed because I'm pretty sure that's he could have got he could have understood that daunting even at platinum rank no target your guys listen guys listen, I, I gotta be honest with you guys okay i gotta be honest with you guys i don't know what's happening i'm gonna have to vod review it i don't know what is happening in this game it's like watching a movie with someone who knows the ending and i'm just watching it for the first time i don't know what's going on <laughs> this is true by the way he's playing uh that's another issue i think that specifically new players have and i have it at the same time the extra deck being this sort of like black box where everything could happen and you have no idea what will actually happen is it can be kind of frustrating because like sometimes it's like do i use my interruption here yes or no and i'm like not sure if i should because it depends on what's in their extra deck like what's about to happen you know like cards you can banish one card for that however 
is something that I think is not really something you can avoid. Like, I think that is also true in other games. Like, um, if you're playing against uh, a match, like if you're playing against an opponent in Magic or Hearthstone, you also need some knowledge, like which cards to play around in their deck and so on and so forth. Like which kind of like if your opponent reveals like he's on this class in Hearthstone, you need to know like the, the relevant cards to play around and all that kind of stuff. Like that is always going to be somewhat true no matter what card game you play like having information about your opponent's deck is important of course Yu-Gi-Oh is probably specifically bad for this because we have the most cards that are all legal at the same time right so it's like amplified by that but in general that's a very card game like that's a that, that's a very typical problem for card games to like having to know not only your own cards but also your opponent's cards to make optimal decisions yes I don't know you. I should have done a Shuna or whatever the fuck her name is. Oh wait, I, I think I, I think I goofed. I should have done a Shuna. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. For time's sake, for time's sake, I'm just gonna do this for time's sake. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I gotta review this. There's so much going on here. What does this do for me? I don't know why I did that. You know what the solution to that problem is, by the way, that people need to like learn and so on and so forth. You is is simply it's a motivation problem because this sort of thing is only an issue if you are not motivated to do it. Like if you're motivated because you're having fun in the process, like if you are, if you if you start playing the game and you love it from the get go, you develop like a motivation, a love for the game, then you're willing to do that kind of work, right? I think and you're you're still feeling good like and you're gonna get rewarded for it because you know what to do when you play against that deck and all that kind of stuff it's just how do you get people to initially get motivated how do you interest people and motivate people to to get over that hurdle you know oh my god is that just not the best card of my deck because I just win because of long yun Platinum God. Oh my God, that was I'm the Platinum Gatekeeper. Is what they refer to me in these Yu-Gi-Oh parts. Holy shit, I can't believe I won that. I think one of the biggest differences I can tell from Yu-Gi-Oh from other card games now that I've given it a lot more time is making a mistake in Yu-Gi-Oh is so much more detrimental than it is in a game like Hearthstone, for instance. One misplay allows your opponent to just absolutely roll you, and you just have to sit there and watch. It depends on the specific situation and the misplay, but in general, I think that's true. I think that is true because like so many actions in Yu-Gi-Oh like nowadays are condensed into fewer turns like messing up one of your turns and basically don't having the ideal line available or having to pass turn because of it um, is much more massive than uh, making like a suboptimal decision in other card games I think I mean it, it can happen in all the games that you get punished for a misplay but I think in Yu-Gi-Oh overall it's more likely. But even through me making mistakes, I still managed to win an absolute ton of the games this stream. And I made it all the way up to Platinum 2. Is that Plat 2? At this point in time, I feel like I learned something that I didn't have the knowledge of in the previous video. See, beforehand, I have no idea why anybody would want to play this game ever comparatively to like any other card game that exists. But now I finally at least have a perspective that shows me that people just really like doing fun combos in this game. Because losing sucks, obviously, and going second might feel atrocious most of the time. When you get to do your combo and you just watch your opponent just get absolutely rolled, it is a feeling that no other card game can provide. And it's the same concept as it is in League of Legends, a game that I have played for 12 years. Stopping your opponent in lane and therefore winning the game is one of the best feelings in the world because you know that you're the reason why you won that game. And even though this is not my preferred card game of choice, I do think that I owe the Yu-Gi-Oh community an apology. I was very ignorant at the time that I made that previous video, and I don't blame myself whatsoever 
whatsoever for making the criticisms that I did. In fact, I still think that most of the criticisms I made in that video are still holding up after I put so much time into this game. But there's a real reason why the Yu-Gi-Oh community was so passionate about that video. The new player experience might be horrific, but if you can get past the sensory overload that Yu-Gi-Oh provides you at the start, this game will end up being something that you probably love and cherish because there's so many interesting things that you could do in this game that no other card game can provide you. Women in the game. Here we go. Oh my God, we're so back. Uh, it's a Taya. Taya. No, I mean, that's a... That's a very good way to put it. I I don't know what to add to that. That's very... uh, That was well said. What am I banishing? Doesn't one of these draw me a card? Mo Yi? I don't think it matters. Okay, can I win this? I can, right? This has, one of these guys has 3,000. We did it! Did I put him in defensive position just to Giga Chat him? Sure. I'm gonna fl I'm gonna BM him. Get in there, Bashuda. That might have been the most enjoyable Yu-Gi-Oh game I've played. And before I knew it, I was four games away from hitting my goal in Master Duel. Getting diamond. Nice. Wait, did you just top deck a Vishuda into a Just Zeus on 800 life points? That's wild. That's criminal. I'd be pissed if I was I'm your the opponent. Best fucking gamer on the planet. I am God. Dude. <laughs> I, I deserve that. I played perfect i did not in fact play perfectly but don't watch the vod because i want to live in ignorance that means i am one game closer to diamond i think if i've learned anything about this game by the way i think i'm actually yugi moto but in the real world because i think i draw actually like better than the average player in this game which is hilarious because i think in hearthstone i draw like an ape everything in the world is telling me to play this game more often it's kind of crazy great love going second I have impermanence it's the only action i have you think i have time to go pee let's see what this guy's playing bruce duelist cup Paid actor. It's better than most people. It's fine. I don't know what paid actor. Happened, but I'll take it. Either he bricked or it was a paid actor. Not sure. Two more paid games, actor. boys. Two more games, please. Yes. Yes. Okay, good hand, good hand, good hand, good hand, good hand. No maxis, no maxis. What the hell do I do? Like, what do you <laughs> We're already now? praying for no maxi. Maxi, blow me. I would like to take this moment to talk about maxi, which might be the One worst of card I've ever seen in any card game. The idea of maxi is pretty simple. You play this when your opponent is going to start special summoning, which happens in absolute ton in Master Duel, which often just translate <laughs> to you probably win that game. And How did this turn into a maxi discussion now? Oh my God. It took 20 minutes. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah, makes sense. Hey, we are now one of us. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh, Raran. Hey. Maxi is so powerful that 95% of We don't know either is the is the answer. You want the answer? We don't know either. We don't know either. The it's uh it's the OCG's fault. Don't blame us, dude. Don't blame us. Play the just play the card game. Let's run this card. Play the which TCG. Is absolutely ridiculous. We're based. And it's so ridiculous that it's actually <laughs> banned in IRL Yu-Gi-Oh! The fact that it's not banned in this version kind of blows my mind. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Baxia, <laughs> he summoned the god. Return this card. Right. Sure, why not? I might as well. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. Okay, we turn you to attack position. We turn you to attack position. And <laughs> Token to attack. You can chat. Attack for zero. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> After that terrific fucking game, I'm going to be honest. You know, I said it the previous game, but I legitimately think that was the best game I played. Once again, I played like an absolute ape. Don't listen to me. We are one game away on a seven Ooh. win streak game. Somehow to diamond. All right. If we win this game, your boy is officially diamond in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, which means two things. And this is very important. Two things. One. I can say without getting a huge response from majority of Yu-Gi-Oh players that I think this game is still dog shit. Two, Maxi is dumb. And most importantly, this is three. I kind of caught you guys off guard. Uh, we could go play Bellatro. Remember, you can type you were there. Let me go first. 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 No, it's cooked. It all comes down to this one draw. Can we draw it? Can we do it? Here we go.
<laughs> Not like this. I hate this fucking <laughs> I'm still one game away, right? No! No! See, I, I've been in this position. It's called it's loser's Q now. Coincidentally, this game is even more like League of Legends because I believe it's something called loser's Q where you just lose games the second you queue. Now, obviously, I didn't play well. I was extremely tilted at this point, but I ended up all the way back at Platinum 1 with four games to get the diamond again. Now, let's just say I got a little bit frustrated. Like, just objectively speaking, compared to other card games, objectively speaking, other card games why the fuck did i do that i decided to end stream here and just continue my journey off stream for two reasons one i was tilted and i definitely needed a break two i wanted to see if i can go from platinum to diamond without reading anything in chat and see if i've learned enough in this game uh, to actually achieve diamond myself Are you ready for this this could be it and then my girlfriend will finally love me all right if i'm not going first i think i'm just i'm just gonna walk away from the that's game. how it works yeah <laughs> i deserve it no what you know my favorite part about this is there's yeah. a coin flip and it lets you pick second if you want. <laughs> I mean sometimes yeah, I can think your deck is supposed to Oh, oh my wait, god this is, this is it. You could just maxi them and they just FF. That was a quick play. What the hell is this? Please FF, please FF, please FF, please FF. Please concede, please concede, please concede. Yeah, please. I can gamma the ash, I can gamma the ash. You can tilt them? Yeah, tilt them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, yeah. please stop yeah. pulling the game. <laughs> Please FF, please FF, please FF, please FF. <laughs> please concede, please concede, please concede, please concede. <laughs> dude, I'm, trying to, dude, I'm trying to get this dude. W, bro. We're just concede, dude. Just just concede. It's over. GG, GG, GG. You got Maxi, bitch. Just what the hell? The what the hell is that? <laughs> no more imperms. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wait, he ended his turn? Okay, my. Mo Wait, but I got nothing. Oh, God. This is really bad. We're so back! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! That's the draw! Okay, now I gotta hope that they don't do anything. Not the top deck. <laughs> this is it. Finally. After all these years. Oh yes! God, sorry. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the, that's oh my god. This is the funniest <laughs> Listen, I don't want to say that me and Yugi have ever been in the same room before, but we clearly have not been. So, I don't know. Oh my God, that's not. Is that what Diamond looks like? Why do I feel like that's not what Diamond looks like? I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh since I got Diamond. The reason I did this was because I wanted to take some time to reflect on the journey itself, but also I kind of have to edit the video. With the main point obviously being, do I think Yu-Gi-Oh is a better game now that I've gone through all of this? And I think the way I would answer this is yes and no. I still think the fundamental flaw with Yu-Gi-Oh is getting into the game. The new player experience is a really bad experience, and I don't know what they could actually do to make the experience better. There's just a lot of upfront knowledge that needs to be figured out before you genuinely start having a good time enjoying the game it's funny the more connections i make with league of legends the more it makes me laugh because his league of legends has that problem as well the first time i play league i hated it and i took like a month off and then i tried it again but i did a different approach but once you get past all of the crazy knowledge you need to understand and how the game works and everything you could do in it i do think this game is a much more enjoyable experience and now that it's been a week i kind of miss it i think diamond is pretty respectable and i hope people can see that i genuinely tried to be good at this game. I would say around 30 hours of Yu-Gi-Oh is a pretty good amount of time to make some kind of review on it. Hey, that was a good uh that was a good one. I like that. I like that.